it's important to take a step back and, and realize what's happening, which is that Google is a monopoly. I don't care what you know the regulatory reaction to that word is or what the legal department of Google thinks, but it is a monopoly. And I think that that's a fabulous thing. Great, great businesses are monopolies. They have pricing power. Um, they have basically meaningful network effects. Um, they control customers. They have massive gross margins. They have huge profitability that's repeatable and predictable. In all those dimensions, Google is a monopoly. Now, now you have to take a step back, though, and figure out what their problem is. Well, they struck gold. And they literally said the business strategy for the first 20 years of the company is to hire every able-bodied man and woman, anywhere they can find them, to run outside with a bucket while money falls from the sky. And then to run back inside as fast as possible so that somebody else can count it while they run back outside while the money falls from the sky. And that's the quality of that business. But the problem is that people, specifically in the equity markets and the public markets, need to figure out as that 20-year window closes, what is the next act? You know, it's like Kanye West can drop a great album, but he's just a one-hit wonder unless he keeps dropping successive albums. You know, Apple is a great company in the first 20 years of the iPhone, but eventually they have to transition their business. Google, similarly, is now in a position where they know that the clock is running out on their second act, meaning investor patience will wane. And you can see it in how they've run the company. So the first thing they do is they reorganize themselves so that they can separate the core search business, which is effectively Google, from everything else. So that investors can just say, hey, OK, take a break. We're figuring this out. Then the second thing they do is they basically try to buy themselves enough time, which is, as you say, they turn up the heat slowly on the core search business to increase profitability while they take that money and throw millions of darts at a dartboard, hoping to find this next great second act. And so if you are a business who thrives inside this Google environment, the longer it takes for them to find a second act, the more you're fucked. End of story. And so what will happen is that their gross margins will continue to be stable. Their EBITDA margins will continue to be stable. And rateably, tick for tick, every single person that feeds off of them will see their gross margin erode, will see their profitability erode, because they will make sure that they boil the frog slowly enough so that they can at least um, you know, keep a lid on an investor revolt against them at the sake of people in the ecosystem. It's, so it's, that's the unvarnished truth of what's happening. All of that said, I love the company and I love the stock as an investor. If I was living in the ecosystem, your business strategy has to be fundamentally different. And what do I mean by that? If you are in the business of being a parasite on top of Google, your medium-term and long-term prospects are terrible. You're an impaired company. You don't know it. If you um, haven't figured out how to be unique, you're in a really tough situation. If you're a unique company that's increasingly become more, more competitive and similar to everybody else, you're running towards the Google buzzsaw versus away from it. Um, and so, you know, travel is really interesting because it is one of the few canaries in the coal mine yes. about what their true long-term business goals and strategy and real issues are. And you see it play out with, you know, TripAdvisor and Expedia. Um, you know, some part of it is misexecution, as we talked about, some part of it, but it can be a bunch of things. But at the core of it is a decision that they will capture the overwhelming majority of profit in the travel sector.